If you've been on this channel before, you will know that I'm a dividend enthusiast. But having said that, there are definitely some types of dividend stocks that may be less attractive to investors and possibly should be avoided. But remember, this is not financial advice. <music> Dividends can be a really fantastic way to keep an investor motivated, to make that investor time and time over many decades come back and continue to invest. Seeing those dividends drip in is truly, truly rewarding and motivating. And having dividends is a really great way to start building a steady income source outside of perhaps your nine to five work. With the aim, of course, of hopefully building wealth and financial freedom over time. But this doesn't happen overnight. With dividends, it's something that you've got to commit to for a long period of time because you really need quite a large portfolio to actually get dividends from it that you can live on. But for me, I'm happy to wait and just keep investing because I'm really enjoying being a dividend investor right now. There are some nuances to dividend investing, of course, and you do have to be really careful and vigilant not to get drawn in, lured in by some false promises and hopes. So one type of dividend stock to be wary of, and this feeds into what I've just said, is those with a high dividend yield. A high dividend yield in stock may be really attractive at first. And I know for me, when I first began dividend investing, I was sort of thinking, well, I'll just make a portfolio of those dividend stocks paying above 10% and I'll get the most money and I'll call it a day. But it's not really that straightforward. And actually those with a high dividend yield may be a red flag. It could possibly indicate that the company is actually struggling financially and using that high dividend yield as a way to sort of lure investors in into putting their money back into their struggling business. Just to give you some examples, two companies that pay an extremely high dividend yield here in the UK is Persimmon and M&G. There are other companies, of course, and I'm not saying that these companies are to be avoided. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that when you see a company that is advertising a very high dividend yield, just please, please, please don't go on that alone and just do further research. Another company in the UK that pay a really high dividend yield is Rio Tinto. And that's one that I actually have in my portfolio and lots and lots of people are a real fan of. So it's not straightforward is what I'm saying. Another type of dividend stock that you may want to avoid is ones with a long history of cutting their dividends. And this is super duper important for those people really trying to follow the dividend growth investing strategy. You've got to be aware of why companies would actually cut their dividends in the first place. They may cut them because they have lots of debt and they're struggling financially, which could maybe a little warning sign, or they may just be changing their business strategy. I think the way to look at it, this is that if a company has a track record of cutting their dividends every now and then, you just need to be aware that that may not be able to provide you with a steady and consistent income source. You still may want that company in your portfolio, but you may not be able to rely on them month after month, or should I say quarter after quarter, however much, however often they pay to actually turn up and pay you those dividends. It's also important to be a little bit cautious of those dividend stocks that are paying a high payout ratio. A high payout ratio may suggest that that company is actually using its earnings to pay its shareholders, which may seem a good thing, but also this may mean that they're not actually keeping any money back to weather any financial storms or grow their business. Having said that, I do think this one is a balancing act. The reason it might be a bit of a balancing act is because some type of investors will actually want to have these companies that have a high payout ratio because maybe they're only focused on the income stream that their portfolio is able to provide them. They may not really care about the businesses growing because perhaps they're in retirement and they just need that income and that steady high income. But I would say for most people, just be aware of this. Next, be wary of dividend stocks or any stocks actually with a high amount of debt. A company with lots of debt may be more vulnerable to any sort of economic downturns in the market. If a recession was to happen, would a company with lots and lots of debt be able to weather that recession and come out on the other side? And also they may decide to actually cut their dividends in order to pay off some of their debt. I personally always like to look into the debt of a company before investing into them. So I tend to look at the total and the net debt. And I like to be able to see whether the company has been able to pay off some of their debt 
without actually cutting their dividends. Another factor to consider when evaluating dividend stocks is the company's growth prospects. If a company is not growing at all or they're struggling to compete in its sector, then it just may not be a good option for some dividend investors. This may also mean that they don't actually have the financial resources to maintain or increase dividends over time. And finally, it's really important to try your best to diversify your portfolio when dividend investing. I guess the point is don't put all of your eggs into one basket and just invest into one or a few different dividend stocks. I know this is really, really hard when you first start out your dividend portfolio because you might not have the capital to actually buy a lot of different positions. Um, and what I would say to that is do what I'm doing and build it up over time or add an ETF to that as well to actually just supplement that portfolio. Consider building yourself a portfolio that has lots and lots of exposure geographically and contains different sectors and industries. And this can just help reduce your risk and increase your chances of actually finding reliable income generating investments. This video was not made to say that all dividend stocks with a high dividend yield are inherently bad or that some stocks with a little bit of debt should be absolutely avoided. I just think these are things that should be pointed out and definitely considered. If you have any questions about dividend investing or investing in general, please pop them in the comments below. And also I've now got a Twitter account where I just share some general dividend investing stuff. So go and follow me on that if you're also interested. But thank you for watching so much and I'll see you very shortly.